women's final. It's all on the line and they are off. And look at Sophie Colwell in the middle. Always gets a fantastic start. She's already gets half a length on everybody. Oh, she's the fastest off the start year on year and we saw that yesterday again. And uh, you know, I uh, think uh, she's the ch Oh, no, she's not. It's, it's Bo Grant in the grey gray jersey and the transition jersey who again on that side is Gatlin. And there is Jeff Coat at the bottom of the screen who's trying to come across and get in a decent position. But Bo Grant, just as she did, has taken the lead in this one and right on her hip is Colwell and that is Baptista as well alongside behind Bo Gran is the red of Katie Zafiris look for those two but there's uh, quite a, a nice bunch there of, of, of four or five and that's Jeff Coat who's just trying to push her opponents across and get as uh, far across to that boy as she possibly can but it is Colwell and Bo Gran early on Colwell's going to move up here, I think. I think Cassandra is, is comfortable in front. I think Colwell will run the, the wider line around the boy, and she likes to lead, so if she, uh, she's going to push it. We saw it yesterday. I thought she ran magnificently yesterday in, in, compared to years past where she hasn't had that confidence in her run, and she knows she's got this second swim, third swim to do where she can open up with the swim power and, and, and showcase that blue jersey and potentially put herself on the podium. That Brazilian there, that's, that's actually Victoria Lopez because... Baptista is in the green jersey, so she's in mid-pack. But at the moment, it's Bogran and Colwell, and Bogran just pushing Colwell just a little bit wider. You can see the, the boy there in the distance, so they've got to go around the end of that pontoon. And then about 70-odd metres, and it's starting to string out just a little bit here. Katie had a much better line for the swim boy. She was sitting fourth or fifth, had that inside run, and is now coming up on the inside of, of Cassandra in the grey jersey. Yeah, you can see Vicky Holland next to Katie as well, so that's interesting because Vicky's been running really well, and she obviously had an amazing run yesterday, and I think she's ready to face those conditions today. We saw her warming up early, and she, she was just loving it. Sophie Colwell and Cassandra Bogrant head to head, neither choosing to sit on the other's hip at the moment. Bogrant, we know her as a fantastic runner, but her swim has just improved out of sight. She's she's across the board very, 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 very strong. I remember seeing her as a 16-year-old in Hamburg in that mixed teens relay for the first time. I couldn't believe how, how quick this runner was in, in the water, and uh, she's going from strength to strength. Now she's in the transition jersey. It's funny because we talk about Bogran's run strength, but yesterday Katie Zafaris in the red jersey, which is the runner's jersey, posted the fastest run time. So that makes things very, very interesting today. Katie a lot more tactically astute, sitting back off, off the feet of Cassandra and, and, and shadowing her for this first swim. Heading back towards the ramp for the first time. They're going to get in and out of the water three times. So some of the smaller athletes will struggle with the, the cold, getting back into the water multiple times, especially with this wind. 1.6 kilometre run, they will attack after this and then back into the water once again. Cassandra Bogrand on the inside. Sophie Colwell alongside her. And when you know exactly how good Sophie Colwell is, this swim from Cassandra Bogrand is excellent. Right behind them is Victoria Lopez. 23 year old absolutely a swim star and when, and you, then, see, when you see a bunch like this you, you realize the pace isn't really on when the pace is yeah. on it tends to be a lot more a lot more single file all right we'll head down to joe she's at uh, the exit of the swim yes i'm just with henry here as the swimmers are getting out they're still very bunched together which is obviously tactical isn't it yeah it's looking very tactical caldwell has managed to lead out the swim um at, but the real uh fight will be here at the end where we've got Moria and Lopez who are going to be going for that elimination at the end. Okay, and we saw Zafira is having a little bit of trouble getting out of the water there, but she seems to be uh, doing okay now. Back to you in the commentary. Yeah, we saw in the background there, Kate Zafira have a big slip and lose a whole bunch of places. And yes, the elimination is coming, Maka. And this is the tough bit, Moria on the on the on the button here. She has to have a quick transition because last last through transition across the dismount line will be eliminated from the race right now. Across the mount line. Across the mount line. Across the mount line will be so. There's at the back there, Baptista, who's quickest on the bike. Unfortunate for her, the bike's not getting included today. Morier, she'll know that this is happening, but at the front though, it's Colwell. Morier's run with that. Who is that without bare feet? She just jersey. put bare feet on. That was Baptista. She's Baptista, just gone straight she's after to run bare foot. She's so cool bare foot. And our eliminated athlete is the under-23 world champion Emily Morier.
who probably should have elected to run barefoot, knowing that she was the last into transition. Her day is done. We saw Leo Berger do this in Singapore with the barefoot running. It's the first time we'd ever seen it. And, uh, and now he paid for it. He paid for it to run barefoot for a mile. That's got to be a mistake. I think it is. It's not a decision. What do you think? Yeah, I, I wouldn't choose to do that. I mean, it, it's not safe. As There's you're saying, she's on the front. <laughs> I don't know whether that's a mistake from her or, uh, yeah. But we'll see how she fares after this first night. That is amazing. Maybe the water's that cold she can't feel her feet at the moment, but she looks very, very comfortable in barefoot. feel it tonight, though. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't matter, I guess, after an event. If you've got the prize purse, deal with cut-up feet after. Yeah. Well, I suppose so. Yeah, it was uh, yeah, it was great to see Rachel Clammer actually helping Katie out of the water there as well. It's, that's what it's all about, Super League Racing. We all help each other out in there. So the uh, swim cap staying on for Cassandra Bogran. Not worrying about that one at the moment. She does have the shoes on though. Swim cap off and shoes off for Louisa Baptista. Sophie Colwell ahead of Vicky Holden. The two Brits together. Katie Zafir is in fifth position. Sandra Doday. And also Rachel Clammer and oh, just about the rest of the field all deciding to keep the swim caps on. But at the moment, it's Cassandra Bogart rated as our number one runner. Crunch the numbers, thanks to Graham Atchison from Forecast Consultancy. And he says that Cassandra Bogart, head and shoulders above everyone else when it comes to the run. I'm gonna, I'll be very interested to see whether amazing. she does this on the second run, Louisa it's Baptista. This is a 100% a choice she's made to do. She's very, very comfortable. She's sitting off Bogrand, who's the best runner, as you said, on paper in this field. She's got a quick transition without putting the shoes on. And we saw when Leo Bergier did this in Singapore, he really, really struggled. But she's very, very Singapore, the world's cleanest place. Perfect roads here, cobblestones, yeah. all sorts of things. Things have been blowing on to the course as well. I'm, I'd be very interested to see how she's got two laps to do this. Now, if, you look, if you look at the wind, I, I was able to walk the course this morning. Very, very, the wind is coming onto their left shoulder here off the marina. And when they make this left-hand turn into the into the run straight, it is gale force. And, and, and you'll see them line up, I think, one behind each other. But as Cassandra starts to pull away, this section here, right in your face. Very, very tough run. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if Cassandra decides to take the, the short shoot at all now, uh, and Rachel as well. Um, it looks like they're running into a brick wall at the yeah, moment. It's, a, it's even making Cassandra Bogran look like she's struggling on the run, and that's when you know that it really is blowing hard. So congratulations to everyone who's worked really hard since 4 o'clock this morning to make the course into what it is. It was a bit of a wreck this morning. Zafiris leads the rest of the pack from Sandra Godet, who continues to impress. Vicky Holland and Rachel Clammer also within the 10 seconds. A big tailwind now. So that'll be interesting to see how they use that headwind and tailwind as the later runs come because as you make that turn where you see that short shoot sign and that tailwind opens up, that gap will open as people are pushing the headwind. All right, as it stands, Bo Grizz, Matt Baptista, Zafira Stoday, Holland Clammer, Sophie Colwell, Taylor Spivey of America, who featured so heavily in a couple of rounds last year. Carolina Routier, Victoria Lopez, Olivia Matthias in front of the home crowd, Anna Maria Mazzetti, Emma Jeffcoat, and, and Yuko Takahashi is 10 seconds back. So at the end of this run, we're probably going to wave goodbye to Yuko Takahashi if she can't catch up to Emma Jeffcoat, who has had a, a tough time on the yeah. first part of this run, considering that she was in good position or reasonable position from the swim. Yeah, the girls probably don't want to let Cassandra get too much time on them now because, as we just saw, she's, she's let the swim out and she's just going to keep pulling more and more time away from them, so they should try to get closer contact. And Katie Zafiris will know that. She needs to get past the Luisa Baptista and start cutting back in to this lead. There's, a, there's three dead turns on this course, so everyone can get a bit of a look at where everyone else is. Already Sophie Colwell's getting ready to put the swim cap back on. Vicky Holland's putting a swim cap on now. She's right up in front. And, and Rachel Clammer, who's who's just sat in that group protecting herself from the wind, is uh, is in a very good spot. It's it's Katie Zafaris who has to close the gap. We saw in yesterday's race she was able to do that in this second swim. But to me, it looks like Asana is opening up on this run leg. She is putting time. It's got to be more than five seconds now. She's put into the field. There is Zafiris behind. She's gotten past Baptista, and she needs to track down Cassandra Beaugrant because she knows that Cassandra has the short shoot, and she does not. Rachel Clammer is the other one with the short shoot at the moment. There's Vicky Holland going past the screen. She looked like she had 
was digging pretty deep at that point from Taylor Spivey, Sophie Colwell, Adam Maria Mazzetti, and there is Victoria Lopez who has had a tough run after a very, very good swim as well. It was the first time I saw Louisa Baptista's face on that on that turn when she was with the group there, and it's finally starting to sting whether that decision to not wear shoes is starting to bite now. It looked like uh, she wasn't comfortable at all. Coming into transition is Cassandra Bogran, so we'll head back down to Joe. Very strong there. It's so interesting to see that Louisa Baptista chose uh, to run there, but uh, she has fallen back. So what do you think that did with her? Yeah, it's, uh, I think she just really wanted to get out there as quick as she can, maybe save her shoes for later in the race. But it, I think it's going to hurt her feet towards the end of this race. Absolutely. I mean, she does have, seem to have lost a little bit of ground. But then now she goes down to the swim. Uh, well, after the running, she goes down to the swim, and it might save her a little bit of time there, perhaps. Yeah, she definitely had the quickest transition. So she went from being uh, about six to second again. OK, well, one more lap on this run. Back to you. She's certainly going to uh, put some points into the grey jersey for quickest transition. It, it's amazing. It's a, it's a very, very interesting decision. It's something we, we actually talked about in, in the offices at Super League, whether any athlete would opt to do that. And it's Yuko Takahashi, you see, has been eliminated, which is... Uh, I was quite surprised about that, to be honest. She had a bit of an accident yesterday, Yuko Takahashi. She hasn't had a happy weekend. One of our contracted athletes. So disappointing for Yuko. She's very, very good in the heat. She was great in Singapore, but not so good here. Asian Games gold medalist from 2018. Hasn't had her best year in 2019. Into the water. Goes Louisa Baptista. Zafaris. Zafaris. Yep. Lama. Doday. Vicky. And Vicky Holland. So this is the hard part now, having to run back down and back into the water. It's always a little bit of a shock getting back in and swimming hard again. Um, but yeah, I think the girls are in groups now so they can work together. Sophie Colwell needs to lead her group up towards the front. She's already seen, what is that now, 20 seconds. So she needs a big, big swim. But at the front, all by herself, and with no one to drag her back, is Cassandra Bogrant. There is Zephyrus, yeah, taking I, a bit of a wider line. i say Cassandra's probably in the hardest position right now. Um, obviously, when you're behind, you've got people to chase, so it uh, pushes you on a bit more. Cassandra's got quite a tough position out front now, and she just needs to stay focused and get in a rhythm, and I think she'll... Hopefully, put, she might pull more time away from them on the on the run. Emma Jeffcoat, 33 seconds back, last into the water. Again, she'll need a, to really utilise this swim because by the time we get out, someone's going to get eliminated at the top of that ramp. Victoria Lopez, Carolina Routier. So there's in those bottom three, there's two noted swimmers, yes. and Lopez is a swim star in her own right. The 23-year-old finished fourth in the Tokyo Test, and um, she had a super quick bike split in that one, but. She's a noted swimmer. Jeff Coates led herself a lot to do. It's a, it's, a, it's a difficult position to be in, giving anyone eight seconds. You have someone to chase, but eight seconds over 300 metres, it's going to pull for a big hard swim and a big transition. And if she does manage to make it through, what kind of run legs is she going to have having to go deep into the red on the swim as Zephyrus turns the boy at about She's just before the midpoint? Yeah, she needs to as well, Katie Zephyrus. Seeing it going to single file there, Rachel Clammer. On her feet, it's uh, single file means the pace is on, and she needs to really close down to Cassandra and hope that Cassandra is, uh, is sort of taking a bit of a breath. We saw this in yesterday's semi final, these two together, and, and it was here that Katie was able to close that gap in the water. Yeah, it's a really good swim from Rachel Clammer, actually. She's not um, she's not known for a swim, I guess, but this is a great swim, and she's hanging in there, and I think she's going to be tough to beat. This guy's got to be halfway through that eight second gap. We saw from that uh, shot at the back. It can be a little deceiving in terms of the perspective of that shot, but it looked like about four seconds. As Cassandra Bogrant returns for home, and there is the gap back to Katie Zafiris and Rachel Clammer. Beautiful swimming stroke, though, on Bogrant. She's just one of those athletes that doesn't look like they're trying too hard at any point, but always has the pace. A little bit of like a like a young Georgia Taylor Brown in <laughs> not, some ways. Yeah, not sure about that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great to watch Cassandra, um, but you always think she, like she's not trying at all and we're trying so hard, but it's, she has such a nice swim stroke and I guess she managed to conserve a lot of energy there because it's so efficient and she has such an efficient run style as well. Just sighting there, probably once every 10 or 12 strokes, which... I mean, on a course like this, you don't have to worry about it too much. 
How often would you have a look at where, at where you're up to if you're at the front of this race? Um, I guess on this race, you probably want to sight fairly often to make sure you're actually heading, because the ramp isn't that wide, so you want to make yeah, sure you're heading yeah. in the right direction. Um, usually for me, I'm on feet, so I basically just follow the bubbles. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's usually Taylor Spivey's feet that I'm following. Um, but yeah, you want to sight quite often, and you just kind of, in a race, you get into the habit of sighting every three, four strokes, basically. Yeah. Had a good run there, and out she goes. Now, last time up onto the ramp, Katie Zafiris had a big slip. This time, she's not in that group, so she gets the hand out. Yeah. Vicky Holland's in here. I saw Vicky right here. Great swimming. Yeah, yeah that is a good swim from Holland. Taylor this Spivey. is a Spivey. Also coming out of the water there Sandra is Doday. Sandra Doday. There is Sophie Colwell and Carolina Routier. And they close Matthias the gap. in the white. So I think Baptiste is possibly going to be pulled out here. Depends if she take the trainers she might be eliminated uh, but if she goes without the trainers again it could be between her and Emma Jeffco she might be she might have to so we'll see if we can get up on Instagram a photo of Louisa Baptista's feet if they're a bit busted up uh, a little bit later on so make sure you tune into our social channels there's plenty of content being pushed out all the time for behind the scenes but at the front right now it's Cassandra Bogart see if she goes without feet she was second in the water and she almost to. last out yeah. so she absolutely has to, has to. If she does it now that's an error Clamour comes out ahead of Zephyrus. Holland tucked in behind. I can see her in the back of the green. She's gone. Oh, she's going to go yeah. straight safe. through. She's safe. So it's uh, Anna who's and Becky. Get, who's going to get caught out? One of three athletes left. Jeff Coat gets out over the line. Zoday gets out over the line. Routier gets out as well. And it's Mazzetti who is unlucky. Anna Maria Mazzetti. What had a great end to the year. Seventh in Lausanne. Tenth in Hamburg as well. It's tenth in the Tokyo Test. The Italian. What an interesting, interesting decision to make. It's a, it's a, it's saved her twice now. And she yeah. was, it's a, she's going backwards in the swim. She wasn't confident with the swim, but she's able to use that transition with the elimination line to to stay in this race. Yeah, I think she'll know that she's not a strong swimmer. Yeah. Um, so uh, I guess she's made that great decision uh, to not go to go without the trainers, and it's put her back in the race every time. We'll, decision. we'll find out if it's a great decision this afternoon. Yeah. We'll look at it. <laughs> she's probably done for the season, but at least she has. Yeah, but but in, yeah. Yeah, in respect to this, yes, 100%. But um, at the moment, we're, last time we were here on the run, of course, this is the second run of three. It was about eight seconds, and now it's pushed out to 13 seconds on Zafiris, and of course, the short shoot in her favour as well for Sandra Bogrand, which is probably about a three second gap, maybe more, uh, depending if you're a good runner. Clamour pushes up on the inside shoulder of. Zephyrus and that group of three there is how well those yeah, the, the resumes of those three athletes are well, just about second to none. Spivey by herself, Victoria Lopez. On the back there is Sophie Colwell, Olivia Matias, Sandra Doday, Louisa Baptista in the green. And Emma Jeffcoat behind Carolina Routier and really needing to get a hustle on she's not going to be eliminated. Rachel Clamour, as you said in that last swim, we were able to tag Katie's a Ferris in that swim. Something, you know, Rachel is, is a great all rounder, but when Katie's putting the hammer down in the swim, she can. We have seen in, in races passing that, that Rachel Clamour has been dropped from the swim, but she's she's really shadowing Katie and, and using it to get through, you know, sitting off her feet in the swim, using it through the headwinds on the uh, on this run course. And it's a lot shorter race. Katie's a Ferris is always coming into strength as they as they come through these races, with the event only being a little over 35, 40 minutes now. Yeah, you know, I don't know whether she'll be lucky for Gran, but she could take out that group of three. Well, it's very important in terms of championship points and the standings going in. If you're going to find a weak spot for Katie Zafiris, who by her own admission has never done an aquathon, um, you need to turn the screws as much as you possibly can. Let's head back down to Joe as they come through transition. Yeah, they are coming through transition again, and uh, Cassandra has obviously built up quite the lead here. It's going to be interesting to see whether Katie, it's going to be all about this swim, really, isn't it? Yeah, I think uh, Cassandra is really uh, pushing the pace and really extending her lead. Um, this race is for her to lose. Katie Zavaris looks like she's hanging in tough. Klama is looking really good with Holland. Uh, it's going to be quite a race for second and third. But it's still pretty windy down here, so Cassandra actually doing a lot of work out there up in front while the other girls get to tuck in. I think it's quite clever. I think it's quite good for her to stay out in front, uh, control the pace, and uh, she can just really run at her own pace. Okay, a lot of extra work for Cassandra, but worth the trouble. Back to you.
plenty of work going on there at the back. Lovely shot as uh, Cassandra Bograd comes up through Thunder Alley. Looks like she's doing it easily. And yeah, just a reminder at the top of your screen that both Bograd and Clamour, as winners of their semi finals yesterday, have the shortcut available, the short shoot. I'm just wondering right now, and there is Emma Jeffcoat. She's, she knows she's at the back. I suppose she needs to do a reverse Baptista and just run straight through transition and dive in with the shoes on. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a smart move. And she has the sweet it's the, only move that's, it's the only move that is going to stop her from being eliminated. Yeah, I mean, I guess she is quite far behind now, so, I mean, why not just why go over it and see what it. happens? Um, this is Super League, so anything can happen, really, and we've seen all the different approaches, so I'd quite like to see uh, Emma Jeffcoat get in there with her shoes on and so, see how that ends up. Okay, so here's my question to you. If you, if you know you're going to be eliminated and you, you run into transition, everyone's seen that, you know that's the only way you're going to do it. If you're smart enough, you have to do it. Now, if she goes into the water with the shoes on and her shoes come off, kicks them off in the water, she gets out, she does the rest of the thing with no shoes, does she get Does she get disqualified for that? Never happened before in the history of triathlon. What, be, what happened? That'd be another one of those headaches that we'd have to deal with after the event. <laughs> You're because, the one that uh, makes up the rules. No, we have the we have the technical official, official Tomo that does all the rule the rules. So I he enforces the rules. He enforces. I don't rules. think there is a rule for that. We're going to find out. There's Carolina Routier. She is second last, and she's going to need to do some work to catch onto the back of this group. She's got a big swim, so if she can stay close enough, she could swim back onto the group. It's, it's Emma's in a lot of problems now. Emma, keep your shoes on. Yeah. I know you can't hear us, but run straight through and dive in with your shoes on. <laughs> it's actually great to see uh, Carol Routier back in there. Obviously, she had a bad crash last year, and that, was, that put her out for a long time. So it's great to see her back in, and I know she's just enjoying it now, and she just enjoys being around her. We're talking about things that are happening mid-pack and at the back of the pack because at the front, Cassandra Bograd. We talk about Katie Zafiris being that consistent athlete that looks the same no matter what the conditions, but right now it looks like we're seeing an absolute carbon copy replay of the first swim run in the second for Cassandra Bograd. This is, this is impressive. She's taken out from the start. Um, she's not looked back once, actually, which is a thing that I probably do quite a bit. Um, but she's not looked back. She's stayed focused. She's looking ahead. She's just getting the job done. She knows now it's one more time round. Uh, yeah, and like we said, she's still got the short two available, but I don't think anyone's catching her now. Look at Vicky Hyde. She's, she's starting to get assertive now. She knows she's coming down the business end. Rachel Clapper has that short shoot up the sleeve to have over Katie Zafira. So this is a big swim for Rachel and a huge swim from, from Vicky Holland because Vicky has a big dynamite sprint finish. Yeah, great transition from them all there. They got the shoes off in one swift movement. Looking at the back of the pack as that top three or that second group of three do the turn. There's quite a big gap back to Jeff Coat, Rush yeah. Routier, and there's Jeff Coat. There Come on, are. Emma, run do through. It. She does. Run through. No, I, I don't think, think it's going to make any difference. I think, I think she's she smiling now. Yeah, I think she knows. We'll see. Maybe she heard you in the box there. Yeah. What is Baptista again? Survive that. Doesn't make any difference. Survive that run in bare feet. Quick transition. Now big swim needed from Caroline Routier to get onto that group in front and sort out the elimination in this last one. There you go. There you go. Emma Jeffcoat, who has been such a fantastic addition to our championship season, gets the draw the dry robe on immediately yeah. after those conditions and tries to stay as warm as possible but just didn't quite have the pace. Meanwhile, Cassandra Bogrand's doing a little victory yeah. lap on In the on her own. Yeah. <laughs> She's looked magnificent. She hasn't even she just looked even throughout this entire event. It was where I was expecting Katie to make a move on that second second aquathon through. It didn't really happen and I think that the benefactors of Katie's attacking this to, to move across to Cassandra has been uh, Rachel Clammer and, and Vicky Holland have been able to shadow her and, and, and benefit from that, that pace. Bit of a gap here between Clammer on one side and uh, Zephyrus and behind her Holland on the other as they battle for what are going to be very, very important championship points. We're going to head right down now to Joe, who's with Emma Jeffcoat. Emma, you've had a tough weekend here, but great effort at least. Uh, unfortunately, you just got pulled out there. Tell me what happened. Yeah, I just got pulled out on that uh, second last run, so I got a similar run to go. Fortunately, I, I think I would have liked a bike, although it's crazy out there. Um, you know, I prefer the normal triathlon discipline, but yeah, caught up some ground on that last turn, but unfortunately didn't have the legs to stick it in for the last round. And how does it feel when you're out there running? How is that wind to take on? Oh my God, so coming around those corners, it feels like you literally hit a brick wall, and especially when the, like, the gusts come through, it's like, it stops in your tracks, so... I guess being at the tail end for a little bit there uh, didn't help me out. I couldn't really shelter behind anyone and yeah, a bit of a tough day, but I'm glad after yesterday that I made it into the final. 
Well, well done for the effort you put in this weekend. Let's go cheer on the girls. Definitely. Thank you. Congratulations to Emma for making it into the final. It's been a, a, a tough weekend all round. And these three that are behind Cassandra Bo Grant are attempting not to work together well, too Kate, much. Katie's, Katie's put the hammer down. She knows that, that Rachel Clammer has the short shoot. She needs a bit of distance. Clammer's swimming for a life. Vicky Holland's going to sit off Rachel's feet and rely on her to close that gap to, to Katie. But I think Katie's going to have to really kick it in now. Yeah, you can see Katie's a lot more focused now. It's yeah. the, the last time for her that she can make a move and try and get a gap on Rachel. Um, she's going to have to really go for it up the ramp out the swim and hopefully get a bit of a gap because, uh, what, it's three seconds maybe the short she yeah. will give you, so Katie is going to need that gap now. Three seconds probably under normal conditions when you've got to spend yeah. an extra 10 metres running into the brick wall of, of, yeah. of headwind. It might even be a little bit more, so... Zafiris at the moment stems between two athletes who've got at least three seconds in their pocket and she knows that, she's the consummate professional, she's always thinking about what's happening around her and she knows that Cassandra's probably disappeared in front of her and she needs to make sure, going into Malta, that she doesn't let anyone in between her and Cassandra. Um, if, if we think over the course of the season yes. that those two are going to be the two championship contenders, 15 points on offer for the win. 14 points and then all the way down uh, to one for 15th place but if she can defend if Cassandra defend if if Cassandra wins this event and then goes on to defend in Malta she'll get a bonus point which puts her two points ahead of uh, uh, well, of, well, of anyone of anybody. at the moment, depending on what happens. So well, Technically three points, because there'll be two points difference, and plus the bonus points. You think the biggest thing, Georgia, that, uh, that Zafiris is, is thinking right now is, if I can't catch Cassandra, I need to make sure that I finish second. I need to hold off Rachel Clammer, because that's going to cost me another point. And, and we, cannot, we cannot be thinking that I can let Cassandra not only get two points in front, or three if Vicky Holland comes through, but also have the opportunity to go back to back and pick up a further one in Malta. Yeah, I think Katie definitely knows now that Cassandra's so far ahead, it's gonna be it's gonna be really hard to catch, especially when she does have a short shoot as well. So all she'll be thinking now is I need a gap on Rachel and I can't let her get too close to me and she she'll definitely be, be looking for second. I don't think she'll want any less than that. Out of the water comes Katie Zafiris and then Clamour. Very close. Yeah, Katie Rachel really up. That was the sound of our commentary box nearly blowing Being over. Blown over. <laughs> so we carry on. Zafiris at 19, Clammer 23, Holland 25, Max Spivey 28. So Taylor Spivey's pushed up and really tried to close that gap in late on. Katie really, really pushed it off that, that out of that swim exit to get that little gap on Rachel. You see Rachel trying to close that because this is a this is an important move. She's in the red jersey, Katie's the first because she's the best runner. And I think young Rachel Clammer has been shadowing her to protect herself from that wind. She won't have that if that gap opens and and, and uh, Zafiris is able to use his tailwind right now. Yeah, so so. K Katie's out. Um, Katie can turn it around when she wants to, and now she knows it's the time that she has to go. She's got two laps of running now, um, and I think she's going to give it everything she's got, finish the weekend off well. Make that tailwind turn now and open up that gap. At this point, I mean, they've got their, they're still going now, they're taking their swim caps off. They don't need them anymore. Do they just throw them to the side? Uh, no, I'm carry them around if you don't have to. I yeah. don't know. They've got to be in the swim They've got to be in the swim box. Okay. Tucked in or in the swim box. So both Rachel Clammer and Xander Bogrand yeah. did not bother to take the short the shoot the first time around. Oh, and she's taking her shoes now with her. She knows she's going to be eliminated. <laughs> with her shoes. <laughs> that big fun. Yeah. Well, you're just going to keep running straight to the hotel. Don't want to have to go back and get the shoes. Yeah. You're going to get out of these conditions straight away. Louisa Baptista, the 25-year-old, the Pan Am Games champion. Well, it's nice to see her. Uh, it's nice to see her running still. So hopefully everything's okay. But we'll check up on her later. If it was anything like Leo Bergier in Singapore last year. I don't think he realised they hurt so much until about 20 minutes after the end of the race when the adrenaline had stopped. Yeah, and, and then the blood started flowing properly. Yeah, you get in the shower and it just burns. <laughs> What a big race from Cassandra Bogrand. She hasn't been pushed all day, really. She 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 sat there in that swim, in that opening swim with a big start. She was, she roared off. She beat Sophie Caldwell off the start, led the swim, opened up on that first run, and it's just looked relaxed for the entire swim, run, swim, swim, run, swim, run, swim, run. It's, uh, it's been a, an amazing performance. Let's get some insight into exactly the mindset of Louisa Baptista, who ran without a shoe. She's with Joe right now. Well, Louisa, a valiant effort there. First of all, we've all been talking about your decision to leave your shoes behind. What was going through your mind the first time round? Well, I think I came to Super League by the challenge. And I think that 
this weather changed a little bit my plans and this was a big challenge so I stopped I think what is the best solution and I didn't have a great swing so I thought well I have to be fast go as fast as I can try to go with the strongest girls in the second swing and let's see what I can do I think I felt a little bit the, the pace but I'm really happy by my decision I could go well almost to the end and how are your feet now after that yeah. It's a little bit painful, but a it's little okay. Bit sore. Yeah. Well, congratulations! Really brave effort there. Well done. Thank you. That's awesome, isn't it? Good. That is awesome. That's uh, that's what it's all about. Is making decisions to keep yourself in the racing, and uh, the the dollars behind that are going to be something she's going to thank herself for. She was almost there till the end. So uh, yeah, I know, and it's a, it's a big step up in yeah. price money. Everyone uh, picks up something uh, in this final, but. Every position gives you a little bit extra in the pocket. And probably some of that's going to be spent on band-aids and bandages. She didn't even take the short didn't shoot. Didn't take the short shoot. She's, just, she's forgotten about the short she shoot. Forgot to take the short run. shoot. Didn't need to take it. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, we've got one more lap now, so I think she's... Rachel uh, will take it now. So let's see the difference here. Because so Katie has Katie, really yeah. put the hammer down on that yeah. lap, knowing that Rachel Clammer has this short shoot. And Rachel yeah. hasn't even taken the time to take Rachel's off pushing, the Rachel's pushing into this headwind. And she'll dump she'll the short shoot short now. Shoot. Yeah, so she closer to it to Katie now but uh, yeah I think she's she's getting there she can be a, a little bit more determined just be more motivated to jump on the back of Katie and then whoever can uh, get that sprint finish in then we're going to see a good fight too between Vicky Holland and Taylor Spivey there they are coming into focus uh, with 800 meters left to go and Vicky Holland finished 11th here last time out and came in as world champion so there are a few people questioning that one um, and herself included obviously didn't wasn't happy with her performance last year and she certainly put that right this year oh without question she you saw that yesterday there was a lot more purpose to her racing i think after you win a world title you you spend some time to just to, to soak that up and take it in she came a few weeks later and raced here and uh, there was a lot more purpose in her racing yesterday cassandra doesn't give very much away she's so yeah. focused she's so composed um, she's like that before races as well. You don't know how she's feeling. She just keeps herself to herself. And obviously today has worked out well for her. She's stayed so focused. And I'm, I'm really impressed with how she's raced. She doesn't give much away at all. Doesn't yeah. give much away in an interview. Doesn't give much away. Just no. runs her own race. Stays, um, you know, she, she doesn't mix a lot with a lot of the other athletes. Some of the French athletes, you, you always see a, a group of them always together. Um, they're obviously very close. And... You know, they're all the members of the same mixed team relay team that uh, sweeps all before them on a regular basis. And uh, she's certainly doing that today. And we're halfway, I guess, to that French domination we talked about as we were getting blown away out there yeah. in the transition uh, in the pre-show with Vincent Lewis looking like the favourite, or definitely the favourite, to take out the men's race. We're still not, we're still not sure, Macca, of the the format of the men's race. We're still waiting to see what the, the wind does, but it, it's not dying down much, so uh, it could well be the same. And there is the battle for second and third, Zephyrus and Clammer, and Zephyrus has negated that short shoot advantage yeah. uh, as Clammer they're running in a little bit. They're running into the headwind there. You saw the, the desperation on Rachel just behind Katie the, to, to close that gap. As they take that right-hand turn, the, the wind is sort of off your left shoulder, and uh, I think it's very, very difficult to close it down from there. How about Cassandra Beaugrand? She was fantastic last year. She has just had a great weekend, was dominant in her semi-final, saw off Katie Zafir as our running champion then, and then comes out with a change in the format and does exactly the same. And it, it's not often that Katie Zafir is trying to chase somebody down, but that has certainly been the case. Hasn't been able to do the job. Zafir has switched off. She's She's taking the shoot again. Shoot. She doesn't necessary. need it. I don't need it. Didn't no, need to take it. <laughs> and there is the smile. She's yeah. been the top three in every enduro. She won the enduro in Singapore. It was changed to an athlete here. It has made no difference. And Cassandra Beaugrand has picked up $20,000 and is your new women's championship leader with a top 15 points. Zafiris comes through on the sprint and takes second position. Well done to our reigning champion and Rachel Clammer takes third overall. She'll be happy with that and there's a big race on behind her for fourth position.